Well, hello, folks. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo T.A. wrap. Where we take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves just that one question, what happened today, and what does it tell us about the coming ones? We do the show four times a week. Every Monday through Thursday is broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. As far as what happened today, uh, can we say down? Big time down. Markets uh, started down, the gap down, never saw the light of day, and uh, sold off the rest of the day, and then eventually got a little bounce at the end of the day. You know, yesterday, from yesterday's highs all the way down until today's lows in our trading room, we'd actually caught that whole move. We started shorting at the highs yesterday. We waited for that first dip. We took the little push back up that looked like it was going to fail. Got short, rode it all the way down yesterday, and then today it just, you know, the bottom fell out. And sometimes you, you catch it just right, sometimes you don't. And, uh, you know, when you do, it feels good. And everybody, of course, is uh, happy about it. But if you're just on the outside looking in, or worse, if you're actually long this stuff, uh, tough day. Three, three and a half, almost almost three three percent across the board. Uh, copper down as, as much. Oil starts giving it all back, 6.6% down. I mean, that was a farce. Uh, dollar down again today. You know, the theme that you saw today, which we've been seeing and we've actually talked about recently, is that you're seeing the um, interest rate sensitive sectors of the market get hit. And, uh, you know, before we go to the others, I'm just going to pop over there and just show you what I'm talking about. Here's the uh, U.S. real estate. Now, I did hold the bottom, and it looks like it actually tested the bottom today and held. 68.78, yeah, it just uh, got under back over, right? So that's a nice little pattern where it probably gets a bounce tomorrow, but this one's probably not quite out of the woods. Uh, but that's one of the interest rate sectors that's showing you this market fears. Here's another one. Utilities, pull over the weekly. You can see how they got pummeled. Market fears... The Fed's going to raise rates. It's finally starting to believe it's really going to do it. And it thinks it's going to do it when all hell's breaking loose. And that is being priced in, and to a great extent, that is a lot of what we're seeing here in terms of the pressure uh, on these markets. And so, you know, I talked about this, I think, last week. Uh, it, it became evident last week that that might be what's going on. And then you're continuing to see it now. As the market prices in the Fed, uh, that's uh, it's actually a, something they have to do at some point, right? And we're not we're probably talking about a quarter percent raise off of zero, so you know it doesn't really matter that much. But what matters is everybody's levered up to the hilt on that, you know, borrow, borrowing dollars and putting it in other stuff. And as the dollar gets stronger, they are forced to reverse those trades. You know, if you brought, bought Brazilian bonds or if you bought whatever it was you bought with the dollars that you borrowed and you levered, you know, 20 to 1 or whatever your number was, you got to unwind that stuff if the dollar starts going against you because it takes away and it takes away in a levered fashion. S&P 500, for the last couple of days I've been talking about, you know, potential targets on the way down. The ones that we looked at and we asked ourselves, you know, would it be able to find support was the, a really small one, which was right back to here, it's top of the zone. The other one was the bottom of the support zone. Well, today it knifed through all of them, came on down, and now it's actually coming to this little congruent area in here. Almost got to it today. In the futures, 1900 was the number. 1902 actually is what we were talking about today in the room. And uh, I think we got right to it on the futures markets uh, and reversed off of that into the close. Uh, this is a spot where you still have that structure that we talked about. It's just deeper now. So the potential ABCD is still here. That hasn't changed. It's just deeper. And so if it, you know, if it actually gets the push, you know, maybe it gets up to here. And even that you know, still looks like about where it ought to go, right? You come back into this little area, which should be hard, as well as your swing point lows. So if you do the ABCD, if this really was the pullback today, volumes weren't that heavy compared to what you were coming back into, right? If this is the ABCD structure to take you back up to this area, then what does it do? It projects right to about where it ought to go, right? And if it can work its way back up there over the next week or two, 
then that would set up something. Now, you know, the, 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 that would set up the big test, right? The big test is back on those areas. The other thing that, you know, is possible is this is going the other way, right? I mean, certainly you can't dismiss this because, you know, we, we do have a trend transition, and this trend transition so far is telling us this on this time frame, but it's not just this time frame, it's other time frames too. It's on this time frame as well, right? The weekly. The only one we don't have it on is the, the monthly. So, I mean, it is possible that this is simply the push back down to try to break this out and potentially extend on an ABCD down. I think it's a little early for that. I suspect it's not going to happen here. I suspect that you're probably going to see the opposite play out, but. Um, you know, you have to look at both sides of it and you have to ask yourself, okay, what tells me which side is true? And that's where you look for signals elsewhere. And talking about signals, you know, we didn't really get those signals here in our markets. Here's the Russell. Russell pulls down in that area that it should have got support and gets underneath it. Uh, if we look at the composite, you know, the composite pulls back in that area that should have supported it, gets underneath it. So when you look at all these indexes, these indexes aren't telling us anything in a way of a positive here that this market's going to try to pull uh, a reversal and go back the other way. Where you do see it though is where you might expect it and that is, is if we go over to Europe. Top here on the high volume low is 45.40. Your close today is 45.41. You go into it, you have less volume, so you test it. You don't break back into it. The seller is unwilling to sell into that area and you reverse back up. And why is that? Well, Thursday, ECB is going to tell us what they're thinking again. And we already know they're doing QE. So, it, you know, the, the ideal is out there is if China is going to devalue, well, we're going to have to devalue even faster. And if that's the case, then what's this market going to do? Every time you get QE, this market kind of goes the other way, right? Goes up. So if you get QE, you may see these markets in Europe actually ABCing to the top side. And if that's true, that's probably going to help our markets, right? Because if you look at the correlation between the U.S. markets and the European markets, they're pretty tight right now and have been. So when I look at the DAX, for example, 9935, you get into it, 9928, you close over it, same thing, right? Same setup, same result, test into it. Sellers don't want to sell down there. What are we going to do? We're going to try to discover price. That's what markets do. How are you going to discover it? Well, you're going to go test the other side. If you can't break it to the bottom, you'll try to break it to the top. That's the way the market works. Now, pulling against that is what's happening in Asia. Here's the Hang Seng, right? I trust this a lot more in the Shanghai right now because Shanghai is just too manipulated. It's not unfettered anymore. This left volume on a relative basis at the bottom wants to try to test it. So that's, uh, that's the Hang Seng. If we look at the Nikkei, the Nikkei has volume at the bottom, had a nice reversal off of it, comes down hard. Nikkei looks like it wants to try to test it. But you know what? I think the Nikkei looks probably more like us in that it just has a hard pullback and it's probably going to find support tonight somewhere above it. If I look at um, another one over here, Taipei, Remember, these guys sold off like 20-something percent already. Got the big high volume low. That was a blowout the way this thing went. Reverses today, but it's an inside bar, right? This still looks good to potentially come down into this area to test and then do an ABCD structure of the upside. So you can see the beginnings, the formations of some sort of a reversal trying to set up here to make that ABCD uh, bullish one, right? Uh, take place and and if that does happen you know then these five percent that we just dropped we'll probably add them right back on plus a little bit more and we'll try to work our way back up to the retest regen zones and if we draw them in you know here's where they are this is where it wants to try to come back to to test to see whether or not this downdraft off that seven month range was it real that's what the market wants to know, and the only way it's going to know it is to get back up there, or the only way it's going to really signal us is to get back up there and we find out whether sellers really want to sell and buyers really want to buy or not. Which one wants it worse? Now, if I switch over to the weekly chart, 
you know, what you're going to see here on the weekly chart is the same sort of patterns, they're just in different places. So in other words, the retest regens off of these two swing point lows, we already started that on that bounce. We got underneath them here, and then we started under them, back over them, right, pushing back up. That was the hammer reversal last week. Now we're back underneath them, coming back into this October low. 1912.09 is the number. What do you do today? You get into it, you get back over it, so on a weekly basis, if this was the low for the week, you've actually tested back into that swing point low, and that test is probably going to be on lighter volume and is telling you that this market doesn't want to go lower at this particular point in time. So tomorrow, to me, it's a big day. Reverse, and if you do get back into these again, these are the swing point highs up here right I mean excuse me swing point lows uh, there's one here there's another one there those are the two at the top that potentially could get tested and their numbers happen to be the same as what we see on the daily chart because those are the swing points on the daily chart note that on this breakdown this year this is the first time ever in history right that you've broken four swing point lows on one move. So, although today looked pretty bad, you know, the potential for a move back the other way does exist. And that potential, uh, we may, in fact, see it realized when we look at these weekly charts, this test back into that same area, not enough volume, probably gonna try to do that reversal, and that reversal potentially that ABCD here on the daily chart. Uh, that's it for tonight. I'm going to leave it a little bit short. Uh, I think that you're going to see this market uh, give you some sort of a bounce tomorrow. And what you're looking for on the way back up is how does it test back into those areas that it should have had support on the way back down. That's these two. You know, if you get over them, you can go to the next one. Of course, if you get over this one, then you're looking at an ABCD potentially uh, to the top side. So, Let's see how it plays out tomorrow. I suspect you're going to see Europe work higher. By the time we open, we'll be doing the same. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a good one. See you next time.